release the Kraken! Welcome back, fellow game designers. In our last episode, we went ahead and did our chain scenes so that we can hit start and go on to the next scene. In this one, I want to take a look at uh, how to keep a count on the enemies so that we, when they're all gone from a particular scene, it naturally updates us to the next one. I'm going to go over to my project here, jump over to my scripts, and we have our enemy uh, base. Let's make sure that's open. So here we go, enemy base. In our enemy base, let's add up here a start function. So I'm going to do a void start and then parentheses. Unity will autofill because it likes to do that. It's okay for this to be private. Nobody else has to see this start function. It's okay. But right in here, we want to update the current number of enemies that our game manager has. So I'm gonna go into here, make a uh, variable. So I'm gonna do, this can be private or public. Now, generally, variables should be private inside of your uh, classes. And you should use getter and setter functions that are publicly accessible. Uh, that's a bit of a safety workaround for encapsulation. You don't have to do that, but I will show you how to do that. Um, so I'll say uh, private, and this is going to be an integer, and this is going to be uh, enemy count. Currently it's zero. I'll come down to some empty spot here. Doesn't really matter where. I guess I'll do it after my awake function. I'll do a public void, and this is going to be, I'll call this one set enemy count. And this will take in an integer, and I'll just call this enemy count. And then for, uh, braces this dot enemy count is equal to enemy count. So my temporary variable will get a current value and then we'll pass it into the real value here. All right? And then we also want to be able to get that value if we want to look at it. So I'm going to say uh, public int and this is now an integer function but what it's going to do is going to return a value to us. I'm going to say get enemy count and then parentheses, and then braces, enter. And I'm going to say return uh, enemy count. I don't have to specify this here because I don't have a variable that could possibly conflict with what I have. This is its own object, this is its own thing, and so on. So this is how traditionally it's done because you don't want to have other variables or other objects out there directly modifying variables of other objects. You should ask permission. So like, you say, hey John, can I see your phone? And then John says, sure. But if you were to reach into John's pocket and grab his phone, he might be very upset, right? So you should ask permission before modifying variables that don't belong um, to the objects that they're in. So I'm going to go to my base enemy and in here, I need to have a reference to the game manager. So I'll do a private uh, game object. I'll call it game manager. And then on start, I need to call the game manager and make sure that I can talk to it stuff. Uh, game manager. We'll say equal to game object dot find. And then in here, I'll look for the game manager. Ah, if I can spell. Just like we did before. Now to be fair, finder, these uh, finder functions do cost a little bit extra overhead. So you really don't want to run these you know, live in code while the game's currently active. But to have it at the beginning of a game or beginning of a level is okay. So you just have to pick your battles there. But once we have our game manager, we're going to call it, so say game manager dot, and we want to get a component, and we're going to grab its code. So I'm going to go ahead and grab it. We're looking for the game manager code, and we want to get access to 
the current enemy count. So I'll say get enemy count. Okay. And then this should get passed into a temporary variable. So I'm going to go ahead and say at the front of this, int enemy count is equal to the game manager enemy count. So I'm going to get it from him so I can look at it, right? And then I'm going to go down here and I'm going to update the enemy count by passing in some new information. I'm going to go ahead and say uh, game manager and get the game manager code just like we did before. So I'll copy this, paste it here. And now I'm going to go ahead and set the enemy count. We want to pass in the current enemy count plus one. But here's the thing, I can't just do plus plus. That does mean plus one. And I can also do plus one. But there's a thing in programming called pre and post increment, which means that certain addition and subtraction operations can happen before evaluation or after evaluation. This is called post increment. And most of the time, about 9 out of 10 cases or 90% of the time, this is what you want to do. But in a moment where, like this, I want to update the value at the same time I pass it somewhere, I need to actually make a change before it gets read. So the order of operations is this. It reads the value, does the work, and then it updates it, which is not what we want. We actually want it to um, update the value, then read it, and then pass it along. So for example, if I do this, and I save it, and then I run it, let me go ahead and grab the game manager, and I'll go to the options over here and hit debug. And we can see the enemy count is currently still zero. Even though each enemy has that logic, it's not going to update. Even though we told it to update here. And we can actually see that in the debugger. If I go ahead and uh, come on this outside bar and just kind of click, let me go ahead and click here. I'll throw a uh, flag here. What that does is it just tells me to run a breakpoint whenever I get to this line. So all you gotta do is click on this bar. If you wanna remove it, you can just click it again. So I'll add that here, and I'll go up to here, and I'll say attach to Unity. I'll hit that. It's gonna run an evaluation. And now I can jump back into Unity. I'll say yes, enable debugger. And we can, we can watch this, so I'll hit play, and then I'll hit start. Now, as soon as I hit start, it jumps back into the code and it pauses right here. And it shows us what the values are. So here's my enemy count. Currently, it's zero. Um, there's the game manager, which was found. It's got the object. And this is currently the small enemy uh, one. Okay. And then we have some options here. We have step into, which is to go into this function call. Or we can skip over it. Or we can step out of it. So I want to step into this function. If I hover my mouse over, you can see the value of our current count. It's at zero. And if I step into, now we are inside this function. You can see the value is still zero, still zero. I'm going to continue forward. This value of enemy count is currently zero, so it's this one. And then I'll continue along, continue along. And now on the second read, check this out. Enemy count is now 1. If I continue forward, you can see now we're outside of the event, and we're going to continue on to the next line, which is going to be down here, which is probably going to be nothing. Right? It goes back. So you can see that the update happened at the end of that cycle. So that was one complete frame that we stepped through. So if I hit stop here, and we'll go ahead and just remove the breakpoint, and I exit there, we know that we can't use the pre-increment, or sorry, the post-increment operation. Now, plus one does work. So you're allowed to totally use plus one if I go ahead and just save it and then run this. I'm not going to run debugger. I'll just show here in the example. Hit play. And then hit start. You can see that here, those did, uh, those did update. That's perfectly allowed. You can do plus one. But the increment operator plus plus 
if you want that to work, you actually have to run that before the variable. So if I come back here and run it first, this says, hey, update the count before we use it. And if I run that and then start, and you can see the value gets updated here. Just be aware of that so you know which one you're using. And if you run into um, your incrementation values not being run inside of a uh, function signature or run as a parameter, just know that pre and post increment is a thing. All right, so I'm going to just exit that. And I'll leave this as it is, and I'll clean this up. Uh, one other thing, uh, if we save this and then jump to the small enemy, we can see that our small enemy inherits from our base class. Now, here we have a start function, but our child also has a start function. If the child and the parent have the same function, the child always overwrites the parent, always. So. If you want your code to run uh, using this particular start function, be aware that you can't have the start function on both. Okay, so in the previous example where I was running code, I actually had this removed. You just didn't know it. So it's important that our small enemy is not using this. So I'm gonna go ahead and just remove my start function from here. But just to show you that this will interrupt, we've already seen that this is working, okay? I'm going to go ahead and just save it and run. You can see that the enemy count did not get updated here. And the reason for that is each one of these enemies runs their own start function, which overrides the parent. So I'm going to go ahead and just remove this start function from my small enemy because I'm not needing it. I will just go ahead and clean that up and save it. And of course, run it. So that's another thing that could trip you up if you are unaware of how the inheritance process works. Okay, The inheriting object or the child will always override a, the value given by the parent if it has the same value. So you can see here our enemy count gets updated because we removed that start function so that the parent's start function is able to run. Okay. So now I want it so that whenever all the enemies are gone, we can just transition into our game win um, mode. So let's go ahead and make a level here. I'll go to scenes. And in here, I'm just gonna duplicate my main menu scene. So I'll go ahead and control D to duplicate the main menu. And I'll name this one uh, game over. And I'll make another one of those, and I'll call the new one Game Win. Okay. Now you can build these as part of our submenu like we did here. The reason I'm doing these as separate levels is it makes it a bit easier to handle the music transition from one level to the next. Um, but you can totally do that inside the Game Manager. There's no reason you can't. It's just one of those things that I think is simpler if you just do each level have their own independent music, then you don't have to have something that controls the switching of that music. And I'll show you how that goes a little bit later on, but that's my reasoning for doing it this way. Now go ahead and open up one of your menus. I'll do uh, Game Over first. Inside of my Game Over, you can see the title up here. I'm going to hit the drop down. And then you can see I have a main menu and an options. I don't need the options. I'll go ahead and just remove that one. Again, I'm in the Game Over. And then for the menu, I'll change this to Game Over. And then the drop down for that, for the background. Uh, let's see, we don't need options. I'll get rid of the Options button. That button is currently sitting at a position of what? 40, 0, and this one's at minus 40. So my options button, I'll go ahead and just get rid of that one. And then I can change my start. This will be uh, main menu. This one will actually be quit. I'll leave it as quit, but I'll move it up a little bit. 
Actually, I'll move main menu down some. That way we can see like our score or whatever. So I'll take um, my start here. And I'll just drop the position down to zero. And I'll throw a text on here. So text UI text mesh pro. I'll call this uh, score text. So text score. And I'll move that. That'll be center. And then center. Uh, position will be, what did I do, 40? I want it to be a lot higher than that. So I'm going to take that up. So I'll grab uh, position here. I'll just drag up a little bit. I like that. So 75. Good. Looks good. OK. So there's my score text. And just, be, so, just so it's in the same order here, I'll just move it above all these. That doesn't matter. It just helps my eye level if I look for where it's at. So game over. There's my background. Let's go ahead and swap the background out. I'll go to textures. And this is going to be the game over background. Oof, right? Looks painful. Game over and then text and then whatever goes here, you know, um, your final score or, you know, you suck or whatever, whatever message you want to put here uh, can go here. That's this level. Go ahead and save it. And I'll go back to my scenes where we got scenes. Where you at? There we are. And I'm going to go ahead and remove my game win scene. Let's go ahead and nuke that. And the reason for that is I did a bunch of work in here, but if I just duplicate this scene, it'll be a bit easier. I'll duplicate Control D. I'll rename the new one Game Win. Okay, and then I'll go into the Game Win, and you can see I am in Game Win. I'm going to come down to the textures, get my canvas get the background, and I will swap this for the game win background. Hey, you have saved the planet, and then we have our score here. Our main menu buttons will probably be fine as they are. And then we have a text for the score and all that. I'm just going to change this to the game win. Awesome. Let's go ahead and hook up some buttons. Um, for this start button, I come back down. Really, I should change the name of this, but whatever. I can go ahead and just change this to menu. Let's see, I'll go down to here, change level. So you can see it still has a reference to the game manager, which is good. I'm going to go down and get Game Manager. I'll change my level to the one with the string. And I'll just pop the name into here. I want to be going back to the main uh, menu. Pretty convenient. And then I can save that. If I hit play, I can hit this and it should bring you back to the main menu. It does. Let's go ahead and test that out with the um, other scene as well. So get my game over. Make sure I take that button. Again, that's my menu button. I didn't save it earlier. Or I didn't change it earlier. And I'll swap this. Go ahead and change the string and then I can specify in here uh, main menu and I should be able to get back I can yay all right I think all that's good and all that's good let's go ahead and add our levels to our build scene so um, our build settings so file build settings let's add in our game over and game win it doesn't matter their order because we're going to call them by name. And I'll go ahead and close that down. All right. And then to jump to these levels, we're going to tell our game manager to transition once we have 
all the enemies. So inside here, on our enemy base, we're going to update on the start. We're going to tell it how many enemies are supposed to be there. And then down here, after we remove some health and stuff, we're going to tell the game manager to remove an enemy from the count. So we got our health, we see some, some uh, subtraction, and all that stuff. And then in here, I'm going to throw on some braces. And we're going to basically run this again. So I'll get my enemy count. So I'll paste that in. We're going to get the enemy count from our uh, game manager. And we're going to subtract one from the enemy count. And then we're going to check. We're going to tell our game manager to check what um, the situation is on his end. So I'm going to come over to the uh, game manager over here. And let's make a new function. Uh, get rid of the start function for now. We don't need that. We might need it later, but I'll just nuke it. I'll do a void. I'll call this one check uh, win condition. All right. And then inside of here, we're going to check to see if you know our level is you know the boss level or whatever it is, and if it's time to go to the next one. So we'll say if uh, enemy count is less than or equal to zero. And for the moment, we really don't have a way of checking for uh, however many levels we have. We'll add that in later. It's getting late. But for the moment, let's just go ahead and make sure that we can transition to the next level. And if it's the last level that has enemies on it, we can do a check there. So for right now, I'm just going to hard code this, but we'll come back and fix it later. So I'll say if our enemy count is less than or equal to zero and our current level, so our uh, scene index is less than, uh, let's see, I'll do it by scene name. And then I'll check our current scene name. So my last scene is scene three. So I'll say scene name, and then I'll pass in the scene index. And if, I, if the scene name is equal to the level three, then I know I can do some stuff. So if the enemy count is less than or equal to zero, and the scene name, we'll say, is not equal to level three. We'll say not equal to. Then we're going to update to the next scene. So change level. I'll just call the basic one without any signature. That just says go to the next one. Awesome. The else on there, we'll say else. So the other possibility is we're going to go to our game win. So I'll say change scene. This is going to be game win. Okay. I'll also go up here and before we do anything, we'll check to see if the player is even alive. So I'll say if lives are less than or equal to zero, we can say change level and we'll say game over. Okay. So I'll even put, I'll put a little uh, comment. So if dead, uh, go to game over scene. Um, if level complete, go to next level or win game. Okay, so we get two options there. At present, if we run this, since our lives are currently, let's see where they are, they're currently at three, we should be able to go to the next, and then to the next, and then win. So I'm going to go ahead and grab uh, my enemy base here. Inside here, we're going to get the game manager, and we'll grab its code, and then we'll call that function. Um, we got to make sure that that's public. Check when condition needs to be public. 
save it, come back, we'll call check win condition, like so. And we actually want to check the win condition after the enemy is destroyed. Uh, seems a bit weird, seems counterintuitive, but this is actually a flag to destroy the enemy, and then on the next frame it gets destroyed. So I'm going to flag the enemy to be destroyed, and then we will check the win condition. Typically, you don't want to destroy an object before you do any work on it, because then it doesn't exist. But this should work for us without throwing any additional flags, because it'll get the call to destroy, and then it'll get the call to check, and the call to destroy will finish before the check condition comes in. So let's test to see if that works. I should be able to uh, jump over to my main menu here. We'll start the game. Yay. I uh, should be able to fire. Pew, 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 pew. Uh oh. <laughs> That's not a good sign. We. Oh. You know what I didn't do? I never turned my uh, bullets into triggers. <laughs> That's an important step here. I did not do that on that bullet prefab. Make sure I save that. Alright, I killed one. It did call for change scene, it did flag. Although that should not have tried to change the scene because the enemy count would have been greater than zero. Oh, I see what's wrong. Uh, my logic is bad here. That's the downside about doing um, this at this hour. Let me go ahead and just close this. Jump back in. So I have an else, but there are other possibilities for this. We also want the else if. I'm going to just copy this line here. And I'll copy the if statement as well. So else if our enemy count is less than or equal to zero. Um, and we want to make sure that we are on level 3. There shouldn't be any other option, but really we're, we're going to flag that and uh, call it. That should put us just into this area. Oh, you know what? It probably threw us a flag. I might have uh, given it the wrong name. It says, and you know, I should have passed in. I should have passed in on this exception the, um, the actual name. So I'll say level name, I'll put quotes here, plus scene name, and I'll put a little space there, and plus here. So this is allow allows me to add a string, so it'll say level name and then it'll tell us what the level name is, and then that way we have it. And then up here, um, for scene index specified, I'll do the same thing. I'll just plus and then scene index plus this. That way it'll tell us what the index is. So, it's a, so we're not flying blind here. And we can do the same thing here. Uh, I'll just do that here. Scene index. plus scene index plus and then quotes. Uh, make sure there's a space here. That way it's not bunched up when it gets added back. I make sure I have a space there so it's not bunched up and then there. Okay, so when it flags it, it'll actually report back to me what's going on, the errors that occur. All right, and that should get us there. And then this win, I actually think it's game one. Let me go ahead and take a look at my error. See if it had reported me to what the name was, then I would check it, but I'm gonna go ahead and check myself. I have a game, space, and then win. That is the correct name. All right, let's run it. I should be able to jump in. Okay, let's see if the game manager has the correct number of uh, enemies. It does, it has three. And if I kill one, it shouldn't flag anything. We shouldn't try to go anywhere. 
Okay, I still have to kill the other two. So, go ahead and kill this one. That one died. And then this one. That one died, and then it transitioned just over. That worked. We'll go ahead and kill this one. And we got a new enemy count, which is nice. And then I'll get this guy. And then this guy. Boom, transitioned over, that worked. We only have one enemy this time. If I kill it, boom. All right, so now it says uh, level name, game win. I should have put a space there. Um, specified and change scene string does not exist. So we got to fix that. But you see how handy having a flag is? It, like it lets you know what's going on. And I'll go ahead and fix my error message. So this one should have a space after name. I should put a space after index. And I should put a space after index. That's just <laughs> for making it pretty. Um, but why is my game win not being specified? Well, very simply, if I come up here to the top here for my scene name, we have our main menu, our level one, level two, level three, but we never added in the uh, the other ones. Okay, it doesn't really matter which ones they are, as long as you know you know what the order is. It should be main menu should be first, that's zero, and then level one, level two, level three, and then the order that I have should be uh, game win. So game win, and then game over, like that, okay? If we put these ahead, then it would change the numerical order. So one, two, and three um, would not be one, two, and three. So zero, and then one, two, and three. That's how that lines up, and then four and five or whatever. Save it. Let's run back in, and we can do another, another test. I'll just pew, 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 blow these guys up, pew, pew, pew. Whoops, floating way off the level here. And then pew, pew, pew. Boom, got rid of him. Got that. Got that one. And we know this should work. Bam. And now, should we go to the game win? Doo -doo -doo -doo. You win. Congratulations. Yay. And then I can go back to main menu. And I could start all over, right? I get start. And now I have a whole new game. Awesome. And now let's check to make sure that we can destroy our hero. Um, I'm not going to go through the process of destroying the hero just yet. All I'm going to do is set my lives to zero. Okay. And this is not the perfect situation, but it's going to be good for, for right now, and we'll come back and we'll fix it. And that is, the moment we destroy an enemy, it's going to check that flag, and we no longer have lives. Bam, game over. Awesome. What we should do is check to see if it's negative one, or check at the end of having zero, but it's fine, it's whatever. But that works, we can hit uh, main menu. Quit won't work because we haven't set it up yet, but it also doesn't work in editor anyway. So we'll worry about that later. But for now, I think this is good and we can come back and do some additional stuff in the future. So stay tuned and I shall see you next time. Hey guys, thank you for checking out my channel. Misty and I both thank you. If you enjoyed that video you just watched, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe. Or if you want to support the channel, check me out on Patreon or pick up one of my books, uh, Life of the Times of Dana Martin or The Guardian's Path of Ascension. Speaking of which, I'm converting The Guardians into a graphic novel slash comic book series. Um, here is a sneak peek. My wonderful artist, Patrick, is doing a great job. I'm excited. I want to push this out as soon as possible. So definitely uh, keep your ears and eyes open for that. I'll be making announcements as we get closer, and I'll post some uh, some shots of that as we go. And if you want to follow me on social media, you can check me out on Twitter. I guess now it's X. Who, who, who does that? Uh, it's BruceRF1. 
uh, at Twitter or at what, what, whatever the new thing for Twitter is. Anyway, hopefully see you there, and uh, I'll see you guys next time.